In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the routing monitor and the route lookup function in the FortiGates so that you are better prepared for the NSC4 exam, but also so that you can use them in practice. But before we get into that, let me introduce myself. My name is Chris Ray, and I make these videos to help you level up your cybersecurity career. If you're here to learn, hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell. That way you can get notified every time I upload a new video. When I'm putting together this lab, it's not really a lab, but when I put together this lab, I was thinking in my head, what's the best way to cement this knowledge in your head? And for me, I know it is tying it to a practical use, figuring out how I could actually use this in, in, in the real world or on the NSC4 exam. For me, I know the best way that I can remember to use the routing monitor is to remember that it's a sanity check. It provides a way for us to verify any work that we've done. You know, uh, if, if you've expected a certain route and it's just not there, you're unable to reach that destination, maybe you put a one somewhere where it's not supposed to be. Maybe you use the wrong subnet mask. You can verify that information by looking at the routing monitor. And then if that looks good, by using the route lookup to see if the data that you're using, the data that you're sending is using the correct port or the correct route. So now that I've logged in here, you can see there's a, on the left side here, we have the routing monitor, which we can just click in here and it'll take us right to the routing monitor. But I like to go one step further. If I go back here to the dashboard, I'm gonna go ahead and add widget, go into the search bar, I'm gonna type route. Sorry, I'm gonna type R-O-U-T, and then I'm gonna hit plus and add widget so that I now have the routing widget on my dashboard when I log in. Clicking this will take you to the routing table monitor, or just the routing monitor for short. So when we're looking at the routing monitor, you should be asking yourself, what information is shown here and what information is not shown here? So first I'll cover what's shown. So the way you see it right now, you get to see directly connected routes, you can see static routes, and then you'll learn dynamically learned routes. And I'll break this down. So network is your destination. This is the destination network. Your gateway IP address, that's your next hop the interface that the traffic's going to go out of, distance or administrative distance, we'll cover that in a minute, and then uh, your connection type, which is either going to be static, connected, or the dynamic routing protocol name, which will be here, and then metric. And now metric, I have to point out, is not made available by default. If you right-click any of these columns up here, if you right-click and then uh, put the little green check mark next to metrics and hit apply, you can see here, uh, hit apply, it then pops up. So normally you don't see that by default, it's not there. Uh, you'll have to make it available to you if you wanna see the metric value. So then the second part of that is, is what information is not shown here? When you're looking at this, you're not going to see inactive routes, you're not going to see standby routes, and you're not gonna see policy routes. Policy routes have their own table. Now I don't have any policy routes con configured on this, but if I did, I would just go up here to policy, click this, and this is where I would see that information. So getting back here, uh, like I said, inactive routes, these are routes where maybe the FortiGate has an interface that's in that, that subnet or where that uh, traffic would normally go out of, but it's down, uh, maybe a link is down, or the gateway on the other end of that route on the next hop is, is detected as down. Those would be considered inactive because they can't be used to pass traffic. They're not put into this routing table. The second one is a standby route. Now these are routes that have, uh, they're a valid duplicate route to a destination but they have a higher distance or higher administrative distance. Therefore, the routing table does not display them because they're not used. All right, so we've covered the routing monitor. It's really that, that straightforward. There's not a lot of depth to it. You just have to understand why you would use it and what information you get out of it for the NSC4 exam. I wanted to take a minute before we move into the route lookup piece and ask you a question. Everything I've showed you here is obviously in the GUI. Would you be interested in seeing the same or the equivalent steps performed in the command line? Let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and move on to the route lookup. And the route lookup is how you would check if uh, you first ch check here and you see, okay, I've got it configured correctly. That's the correct subnet. That's my destination. The, the gateway IP address is good. It should be going out that interface. This all checks out. You can go here to the route lookup. And the only thing you need to put in here to do a basic route lookup is a destination IP address. So let's go ahead and just pick at random that uh, 10, 10, 10, 10. Uh, zero subnet, I'm gonna say 100. There's nothing there, but it doesn't matter. You don't need anything to be there. It's just checking the route. Uh, let's say port 80. Again, you don't even need to put in a port. Let me just pull that out of there to make a point and then hit search. It then shows you the route that would be used to deliver that data. 
So now what happens if you put in a route lookup for a route that you don't have? You don't have a route to 192.168.1.150 for instance. We hit search, it tells you there's no route here. No route exists for this destination. And there you have it. That is a routing monitor table and that is the route lookup. I hope that uh, tying those into a practical use can help you remember them for the exam. But before we go, there is one more thing I want to cover here. And let's take a look at this here. Uh, so if you don't know what administrative distance is, if you don't know what priority is, if you don't know what metric is, you need to learn those. And they're kind of a universal definition. It's not unique to Fortinet and Fortigate. Uh, you can use the Cisco definition here, but just in case you want specifically what we're talking about, when we say administrative distance or just distance, this is the number that's used by the Fortigate to determine which route is preferred for a particular destination. Now, if there are two routes to the same destination, the one with the smaller distance will be made active and will be used for routing. Meaning, if there's those two routes, one's made active, one's made inactive, what are you going to see in the routing table? You're only going to see the route, you're only going to see the active route. You won't see that inactive route. So let's move on to priority. When we're talking about priority, it's only used on static routes, and by default, its value is zero. When static routes have the same distance, which we talked about just a minute ago, administrative distance, the value priority is used to break the tie. If you need to configure this in the GUI, you'd need to hit that plus button next to the advanced options to plug it in. And then finally, metric. This is used to determine the best route to a destination when you're working with dynamic routing protocols, OSPF in this instance. If two routes have the same distance, the metric value is used to break the tie. The lower the number, the better. You know, when I made this video, um, the route monitor and the route lookup, those are kind of basic tools that I've been using for a few years. But even then, I still learned a new thing, and that's what I'm, I'm here for. I'm here to learn. I'm also here to teach you guys. So if you found value in this, if you liked what I'm doing, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video like this. And lastly, my name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you build out that cybersecurity skill set.